Amy, don't die. Hurry up, Brian. We're almost there. Jeez, it's a quarter of midnight. Uh, hey, Amy. Amy, did you hear what I said? I said it's a quarter of 12. 15 more minutes, I turn back into a clump. <gasps> Amy? planning on rolling around in the dirt all night. We're not getting paid to fool around. Come on, Brian. Come on, I won't bite. Unless you do first. Radiant stress. Come on, don't be such a baby. Look, I'm sorry. We've got a job to do. Have I got all the explosives? Can you pack? thinking. This guy Hemmings pays us this ridiculous amount of money to sneak up here in the middle of the night just to blow open an abandoned mine. Don't you think there's something valuable in there? You know, maybe we could... No. We do our job and get out of here. Amy. Just fine. How do you like that? My flashlight died. Did you hear that, Brian? Quiet! Brian! 
think I hear something. Brian! You creep! Look, I'm sorry for what I did. I realize it wasn't nice. I'll, I won't do it again, okay? What else do you want to hear? Hey, get out of here! Run, please! Run! <laughs> ago mm -hmm. well the group that's hiring us thinks that there's enough gold down there to warrant reopening it so how much we get well look it's only a day's work maybe two at most we go in and out with those turkeys that's it and uh booze and broads for a month huh whoa okay right. <laughs> so when do we meet these guys night at the beach The elders spent the night in the cave. Next morning, 16 were found dead. After that, the Indians wouldn't go anywhere near the place, and it's been taboo ever since. Of course, those are just unsubstantiated legends. We did run to some evil spirits in that bar in El Paso. Yeah, yeah, I went to bed with a bottle of that stuff uh, Saturday night. When I woke up, it was Wednesday morning of the following month. <laughs> Evil spirit, ghost, monster. Oh, you don't really believe that. I do. I don't. I don't know. That's not it. They don't know. Nobody knows. Or at least but no one I've contacted has admitted they do. I can't imagine why. Regardless of what anybody knows, there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that something is up there. And you want to find it. Well, I'd like to know what happened in the Golden Spike. According to the county records for surveyors' information, they gave no reason for its closing. Now, that's something I'd find of value myself. You know, it never hurts to know all you can about a played-out mine before you go crawling around it. According to my research, the mine was never actually played out. Then why did it shut down? The miners refused to work. My wife retypes all my manuscripts. Well, why did the miners stop working? They were scared out. By what? Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to get the wrong impression. I'm a writer, and I tend to be a little dramatic. Oh, really? On the other hand, I have done my research. What research? Here, there are some photocopies. Well, what are they, obituaries? Some are, actually. Others are uh, uh, death certificates uh, from the state and county department of records. Who is habituated? Those papers are a compilation of all the people to turn up missing or dead since the opening of the Golden Spike. How do, Jeff? Tony? Hi, Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Morgan. Uh, how you doing? Back still bothering you? Nope. I found a cure. Because <laughs> I only use it for emergencies. 
Good evening, Mr. Morgan. My name is Angela Platt. I'm the geologist for this expedition. Uh, uh, hello. Howdy. Uh, my name's Flanders. Dan Flanders. How do? Name's Morgan. Uh, he's a writer, Morgan. He's writing a book about the Golden Spike. Oh, yeah? About time. What does old Hard Nose have to say about all this hocus pocus? Who? Hemmings? Good evening, Mr. Hemmings. You're late. Oh, how do, Mr. Hemmings? I said you're late. Yes, I know. He knows. Did you by any chance pick up the gear? Yes, it's in me pack. Wonderful. Be a good boy and get it, will you? I suggest the rest of you get some sleep. We have a lot of mind to chart tomorrow, and I'm not paying you to take cat naps. stuck in this mess. You signed a contract. <sighs> Was I drunk? Sober. Oh, that explains it. coldly in the desert night as we sat around a blazing campfire watching the angry sparks dance in the air about us. The five of us spoke in hushed voices as if afraid to awaken some unseen night demon. And I was relating a number of the stories surrounding the multiple closings of the Golden Spike Mine. Dan? When, um, when a withered fossil of an aging prospector staggered into camp, this was Morgan. Just want to get us up to date. What do you think? I just don't care for Calvert much. Oh, he's just being difficult because he has no imagination. Uh, well, that's to be desired. We wouldn't want a giddy guy. I still don't care for him. Well, that's your prerogative. Nighty night. This was Morgan. A British soldier of fortune turned gold miner. It was he who was to lead us into the mouth of the spike, the entrance to our adventure. to know if any of the goings on around here are true. If you could help me. I'm not sure as I can. But I thought you knew this area like a map. That I do. That I do. Well then. Well, what I mean to say is, I don't know if any of the stories you might have heard has an ounce of truth to them. Oh, I see. This is Indian land, you know. Well, yes, I knew that. Sacred land. Of course, to an Indian, uh, any Indian land is sacred land. 
But strange things happen long after the Indians have their land taken away from them. Well, sacred is as sacred does. The way I figure it, those Indians was a little hot under the headdress when the whites first moved in. Well, well I don't blame them. Well, no, sir, neither do I. But it seems to me they got this good idea to scare away the whites. They put out this story about a great god living up in the mountains who hates whites. What's so unusual about that? They got this secret cave somewhere in the mountains. I've heard about it. Oh, I've heard about it. So when the whites come digging around, they ups and pops one or two of them off when nobody's looking and marks it up to that old white hating god of theirs. A secret cave? Yeah, a, a kind of shrine. Well, this worked all right for a while, except for one thing that nobody expected. Yes, go on. When they scared away all the whites, you know what they had left? What? The yolks. The yolks? <laughs> Cheer up, matey. Just because there ain't no monsters, it don't mean to say there ain't no action. the single most awful ditty ever to assault my ears. I thank you. Don't drink too much, it'll give you a cramp. Are you sure this is it? Yep, this is it. For a mine, it sure looks like a cave. Don't worry about it. So the mine starts inside the cave? Yes, sir, above the, uh, the spike follows hundreds of interconnecting caverns. All right, now let's 
Drop those lines and lower the equipment. Time is money. Curse of the Golden Spike, Chapter 13, The Mine Today. We stood in front of the gaping black mouth of the ancient cave, in awe of its terrible splendor. You too. Angela. <laughs> All right, let's get moving. Everything all right? Yeah, okay. Send down the meat. I'll go first, followed by the ladies. You gentlemen bring up the rear. Oh, I'm, I'm 
I'm okay. I'm okay. No, no broken bones. You only fell two feet. What happened? The rope broke. You okay, matey? It was cut. Nonsense. It must have been sheared through by a rock. <laughs> Whatever you say, boss. Don't give me that tone. We have a serious job to do here. I have to go back to the company and tell them whether there's enough gold left in this mine to sink half a million dollars into exploratory digs. I don't fancy complicating things with your own personal brand of hysteria. All right, we'll continue as planned toward the other side, skirting the old mine. Get going. God all day. You want to read the map? Take a break. All right. Take five. But don't stray too far. surrounding these caverns, starting with the evil spirit. 
Yes, and continuing with the golden spike and the two unsuccessful attempts to reopen it. I thought there was only one attempt. We're the second. <laughs> Dramatic license? Premonition. Jeff! What is it? I think you better see this. What now? All right, I'll be right back there. What now? What's up? Over here. Who's out of the area? Yeah, nobody around. Oh, what is it? It's not ours. Look at the frame. Who could have done that? I don't know. Looks like somebody threw it around a bit. You have to do a lot more than that to one of these frames to get it to look like that. Was this how you found it? Yes, sir. As soon as we found it, Tony gave the alarm. Well, since there is obviously no one around, I suggest we stop wasting time and get moving. Listen, Hemmings, this is no artifact. Now, do you think we should spend the limited time we have running around looking for someone who probably isn't here in the first place? He could be hers. And he could be in Basin City drinking beer. Oh, Mr. Oh, Hemmings. Now, this mine has three levels of 10 miles of tunnel running through. If we ever complete our exploration, we'll probably find them, provided they're here. What do you make of that? Uh, looks like plastic explosives. Explosives? Well, I'll be jiggered. Isn't that stuff a bit dangerous to leave lying around like that? Well, only if there are any blasting caps. Well, that's a relief. We've got work to do. Mr. Hemming is becoming a regular Captain Ahab. No, 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 I mean about the path. Oh, well, uh, I, I don't know what to think. What do you want me to do about this? Oh, uh, <clears throat> what, what are you doing? I don't want that stuff in my pack. Oh, don't worry, it's safe as sunshine. Just don't sit down too fast. <laughs> Mr. Calvert, <laughs> I'm painting the scout to the tunnel ahead, not the dally at the end of the line. Aye, aye, Captain. We pressed on into the forbidding darkness that lurked around us, afraid that any moment might be our last. What's your point? Well, according to Arnold Fletcher, in the great Colorado mining disaster when the whole side of the mountain blew off, well, he described it like, you know, you leave a stove on in a house and, and it builds up pressure and then when it finally ignites, like a big conflagration. And, yeah, look, well, like look, a flare can set it off. There's plenty of fire damp in this cave, but fortunately, it's heavier than air. It only collects in the lower levels. Are we going any deeper? No. Besides, I wouldn't worry about setting it off anyway. Unless, of course, I had explosives in my pack. That's not funny. <laughs> What's going on here? What the? We're supposed to be looking for ore, not ingots. Oh, uh, that was found on company property. It'll have to be returned to the company. I'll take personal charge of this. 
<laughs> All right, let's go. We'll let him be the treasurer. Come on. you here in the first place? A big blooming boat, mate. This rough-hewn Englishman, a boat? Yeah, best way to travel. Especially in those days, you could sort of relax, you know what I mean? No, no, you, you, you misunderstand. Uh, I mean, what were your reasons? Your modus operandi, so to speak. Oh, no, I didn't have one of them. No, I don't think I could have driven it anyway. The road was flooded. An obstreperous individual with a wealth of knowledge. If only I could break through that rough-hewn exterior. Well, I mean, you've mined other places, right? I mean, where? Oh, the North Atlantic. Oh, this man from Camelot. The, the Atlantic? Yes, the, the, it was during the Second War to End Wars. I worked on one of those mine layers, you know, mining the North Atlantic. Not on my own, Mark, you. Naturally. Me and another bloke. No, you misunderstand. What I want to convey in this report is is the reason you wanted to mine here. You know, like, dig, prospect. Right, yeah, some people just don't have a sense of humor. What was that? I suppose it was when I first went down a mine. How deep was this mine? 300 feet. Oh, okay, yes, go on. 300 feet, mate, not 3,000 feet. 3,000 feet, great. Okay. Give you guys a foot and you take the whole leg. There must have been some incentive for you to want to get into mining. You know, like I said before, a modus up, uh, some overwhelming reason for wanting to, to mine. Well, I suppose it was when I joined this real big blooming operation. They mined off the stuff that was required by Western Europe. Yeah, and you know what else they used to do? They used to give each miner a ton for himself every month, free. Nix and for nothing. One ton of... Wait a minute! There's not enough gold in Fortnite. 30 miners a no, month no, no, of gold No, no, for... no, no, no. Not a gold mine. A coal mine. You know, coal, black diamonds. Coal like you're burning your fireplace. Coal, black diamonds. Diamond, diamond mine. Great. And diamond. you know when we got off of that stuff out of there, we found one of those. And do you know what one of those is? What? A dead one of those. Morgan! Come on, I'm trying to write a book here. I'm on one experience and, and that type of thing. When I first went down there, we met one greenhorn, I tell you. He would never make a miner. Never. Well, we were working down a mine one day with another guy who fancied himself as a ventriloquist. When the ventriloquist says to me, watch the greenhorn. And with that, he hollers right into the coal face where we'd been working. And the voice said, Help! Help! I'm stuck in here! Well, that green horn, he jumped right up, grabs a shovel, gets hold of that gold face and starts attacking it real wild, you know? And the voice is saying, Help! Help! I'm still stuck in here! And he piled up half a ton of coal in back of him, when all of a sudden the voice came from the pile of coal. And the voice now said, Help! I'm back here now! Well, that green horn, he threw down his tool and he said, well, it's your bloody fault. You should have jumped off the shovel. How big was the shovel?
Mr. Hemmings, I think I'd like to take a sample of this. Uh, your attention, boys and girls. We'll be taking some readings for a few minutes. If you don't have any further responsibilities at the moment, do try to stay out from underfoot. to Flanders. Well, don't worry, it's only small talk. Well, keep it that way. <laughs> a little touchy, aren't you? No, but you're just a little crude. Does he get jealous? Mind your own business. You know, I have a feeling I'm not getting anywhere. Oh, on the contrary. You're just about to leave. charge. But you're the expert on caves. What's done is done. Think about the living. He's right, Jeff. There's nothing else for us to do.
other ways out of this tunnel. Once through the old mine. Ah, that's too dangerous, mate. Those timbers, they're, they're rotten twice through. I agree, I agree. The only way out is to go back the way we came. I'm gonna have to climb out of the pit and lower another line. Can you do that? It doesn't seem like I have much choice, does it? Oh, bleeding roofs caved in. Oh, bleeding law. What are you going to do about getting us out of here? Nothing. Well, be sensible, Calvert. Look, the only other way out is through the old mine. We know that's too dangerous. Look, I say we wait until your company finds out we're overdue and then sends out somebody to find out why. What if they won't send anyone? Of course they will. They have to. Not if he didn't tell them we were here. Is that true, Hemmings? Is that true, Hemmings? Yes, it's true. Now listen, Calvert. Oh, oh. Bravo, Calvert. Calvert. Calvert, you've got to apologize to him. What are you, crazy? He's already gotten us killed. We don't stand any better chance than the two of you at each other's throats. <clears throat> what, you're gonna hit me too? You're gonna be a big man? You're gonna be the big boss? It may not look like it, but I love Cindy very much, and I'm not gonna let you kill her. All right. What do you want me to do? Apologize to him. We've all got to stick together. All right. <coughs> what do you want? I came to apologize. Don't make me laugh. Look, I, I lost my temper. I'm sorry I hit you. A lot of good that does. We need you. We all got to work together. All right, I'll, I'll accept your apologies on one condition. I'm still giving the orders. Whatever you say. All right, let's get going. Thanks. Sure. got organized around here. We can't go back the way we came, so we're going to drop to the second level and exit through the old mine. This one did. Maybe we should dig our way out the way we came in. <laughs> Feel free. What do you make of that? Whoa! 
voices from the past. Oh, don't be poetic. If you know something, spit it out. When the dig finally closed in 1883, the, the miners sealed the inner chambers to prevent whatever was picking them off from getting out. Look at Frank and Grown Mason do their job. They ought to be dead by now. One hope. I'm sure it never existed. Something had to make that hole. <coughs> Mind like a steel trap. The evil lives. I can feel it. Shut up. What? I said shut up. Do you have any questions? We can deal with them topside. That understood? Put that flare up. There's probably still some gas in there. about the mine, they can't be true. We're talking about people dying. You know, ever since I saw that skull, I, I got the horrible feeling that all those stories I'd, I'd collected were true. I mean, more than a feeling, I, I believed it. I don't know what to believe in anymore. Believe in each other, each other. What's that? The wind stopped.
see to it. We can't afford to lose anyone. Sometimes they use acid to eat through hard areas in the rock. Uh, sometimes it'll pool and, and leak into the lower levels. That's right. Maybe she was on the, the other side of the cave and trying to dig her way out when, when she died. Oh, God. What's the matter with you? I weren't no acid what killed her. Morgan! I'm sorry, Jeff, but I've seen more than one man half eaten with acid, and not one of them looked like her. Superstitious. It lives. What lives? I don't want to hear any more of that from anybody. What about Angela? Uh, I'll take care of her.
I'm all right. Check the others. Get that thing out of my eyes. Where's Dan? Dan! Oh, don't you touch me! Let me help you. Like you've helped us so far, like you helped Dan. Hold it right there. Just shut up! I don't want to hear anymore. Get away! Get away! You killed Dan! Stop it! Dan! Stop it! Dan! Oh. Oh, that's not right, Jeff. I know. going after him. You're what, Jeff? We've got to find a third level. Look, you can do that much without me. Morgan will help you. Morgan will not. I've heard about that third level enough to know that I'm not going down in it. Don't you see? It's the, it's the home of the beast. It's lair, it's nest. What about the exit? There is no exit. Look, Morgan, I'm asking for your help. Please find the exit. And then you're free to do whatever you want. All right, Jeff. But not for you. For her. Calvert! I paid you, Calvert! I paid!
I say we turn back. Who asked you? We'll never get through that. Even if we did, we'd just keep going down. Our only chance is to go back, get closer to the surface. Much as I hate to say it, I agree with Mr. Emmons. There's no way out from level three. Flanders was wrong. Where's Dan? Hey, what is it? He's dead, isn't he, Calvin? No, God, please, no. You've got to let us know what we're up against. I don't know. Jeff, shut up, you big dumb fool. I want my head. What do you want me to do? I was wrong. I let you down here. Now two people are dead. You better find somebody else to get you out of here. You're not going to get out of this side. He's... You were paid to leave this. I don't want responsibility for your lives. Morgan was right. Let him take over. Coming through now, then. He's waiting for old Morgan. He's going to get out of this hole. He's going to get out of this hole right now.